Welcome to Morning Message for October the 1st. Well, if you tuned in on Tuesday, you will know that I complained about my beard being too long and this strange sort of curl that happens after I've been wearing a non-medical mask. Well, I've had my beard trimmed. I hope you like it. It's also done to uh, celebrate my sister's birthday. So happy birthday, Pen. I was thinking the other day about uh, driving into Truro, Nova Scotia from Halifax on the big highway. And just before you get there, there's a uh, an overpass. You hardly even notice it now uh, with the large highway, but there's an overpass there and if you look to the right you'll see the community of Hilden. Now the only reason I would know that is that my grandmother, uh, my father's mother, uh, spent some time there as a uh, youth. And so every time we drove over that overpass uh, Nanny would wrench herself up as high as she possibly could to look out the window and look down on the community of Hilden. I have no idea what she was looking for. You know, if a building had burnt down or if a new building had been built or somebody who once had uh, 40 head of cattle now only had 20. I have no idea uh, what she was looking for. Perhaps Mrs. Brown's washing was always the same and she was just checking that out. I asked her once, uh, what she was looking for and she just said I'm, I'm just looking. You uh, might not even notice Hilden when you drive by there now. Uh, the trees have grown up. I mean now you can tell my age. <laughs> I'm now complaining that a view that I once had is now obscured by 40-foot trees. Um, you can still see Hilden a little bit if you look really fast and I have no idea what my grandmother would have seen uh, in the in the f few seconds that it took us to uh, drive over that uh, drive over that overpass, the reality is that things were changing in Hilden. Trees were growing larger, uh, farms were being bought and sold. Uh, you know, someone who had cattle no longer had cattle. Whatever, things were changing in Hilden, and I guess in some small way, my grandmother was. Uh, uh, watching that and taking note of uh, all of those changes. Change is inevitable. In fact, I would go so far as to say change is good. Uh, I don't want to be the same person today that I was yesterday. I want to be better. I want to change. Um, and I, So I just think change is good. I always find that saying that people have sometimes when they're resisting change, uh, you know, you don't change for change's sake. Um, years ago I came up with a reply for that. Uh, and I say to people, well, you don't stay the same for the sake of staying the same either. So I think change is good, change is inevitable. Uh, some change isn't good, of course, and, and some we, we, uh, we uh, don't particularly care for. I think one of the challenges facing the church in the midst of a pandemic is uh, how do we do the things that we've always done? Um, how do we do them differently? The reality is that uh, Thanksgiving is going to be different this year. Christmas is likely to be different this year. So I think there are two things we have to keep in mind. One is to acknowledge that difference, to acknowledge the grief that might be associated with that difference as well. Um, so that's one of the things we, we need to do. But the other side of it is that even in the midst of a pandemic, we need to find a way to acknowledge these sorts of things like Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. There is still something for us to celebrate. There is still something for us to give thanks for in the midst of Thanksgiving. There is still something for us to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at Christmas time. These are still things, even in the midst of, pan of a pandemic, even in the midst of the grief that we're feeling, even in the midst of all this tremendous change, there's still something for us to celebrate. There's something for us to, to, uh, to do and proclaim uh, in this world. Um, it's going to be a challenge for the church 
It's going to be a challenge for us as we try to figure out ways uh, to do both of these things appropriately, acknowledge our grief and to celebrate the things that are worthy of celebration. Could be these big things like uh, uh, Thanksgiving or um, Christmas, but it's also those, I don't want to say smaller things because they're not smaller things to those of us who have them. Uh, like my sister's birthday today. It's not going to be the same as it was before, um, but, uh, but still we celebrate um, birthdays, uh, and other triumphs in our lives uh, in ways that are different than we might have before. But we, we still do our best to do that. And so that's the challenge facing the church. That's the challenge facing clergy and parish councils uh, as they try to navigate this, uh, this reality that we're currently in. Um, and to honor both of those things, that grief and that need for celebration. God bless. Amen.